All right, it works. Hooray! My whole trailer is being powered by the anchor. I think portable power stations eventually are gonna replace large RV power systems. You're gonna just buy the system, wheel it in and be done. Hey guys, today I'm working in my 14 foot utility trailer and I'm gonna be installing this 30 amp transfer switch by WIFCO. This is an automatic transfer switch and I'm gonna be using this to switch between shore power and my Anchor 767. In my last video, I did a full review on the Anchor 767, where I mentioned I was planning on using the 767 as my main power system for my utility trailer. This is the power station I'm gonna be keeping to power our adventures and to run my little trailer. Also, later in the video, I'm gonna have some exciting news about the 767, which is actually being rebranded as the Anchor Solix F2000. And at the same time, they're running a mid-season sale with some pretty heavy discounts. Make sure you stay tuned. Rather than building a full power system with batteries, inverters, and all of the other things that you would typically see in an RV, I'm just gonna use the power station. Now, I'm not living in this trailer. I don't need to run a lot of tools or anything like that in here. I just need some basic power and to keep all of my tools charged. Occasionally, I might need to run a drill press or a bench grinder, something like that, and this is more than capable of handling that. I also have another issue, which is that my current air conditioner in the trailer is not doing very well. It's 106 degrees today, and it's just barely keeping up. In fact, it's probably almost 90 degrees in here. I do have a spare 14 inch opening, and I plan on installing probably a 13,500 BTU rooftop AC, just like an NERV, in the trailer to keep it nice and cool. Now, as you may have guessed it, the Anchor 767 is not gonna power that for the full day. So I also just ordered a 4,500 watt generator that'll be here in a few days. And I'm gonna be doing another video about that. Once I get the AC installed and I have the generator, I'll be able to run the AC for the entire day. But for most of the year, I'm not gonna need the AC. And this is gonna be my power system of choice. So let me give you a quick tour of my trailer, show you what I'm doing with it, and then we can get started on the project. This is a 14 by six and a half foot trailer. I wish it was the seven foot, but close enough. Here you can see I got the, the power coming in and this is so when I have to kill all the power to this, I can keep the AC running. So the AC I have in here right now is just this old Idyllis. It's from, I think 2014. The gentleman that I bought the camper off of had originally set this up to be a, a small camper. Of course, I had my own plans for it, which is finally coming to life now. Last summer, I did do some videos about the trailer. I showed how we purchased it and what we planned on doing with it. And of course, we were still living in our Cirrus at the time, and we were using the trailer to transport all of our stuff from New Hampshire down to wherever we landed. We were originally gonna move to Arizona, but that didn't work out, and now we're in Texas. So Sasha and I have put all of our stuff into storage, and that's what's allowed me to start turning this into a mobile tool trailer. It's not quite done yet, but at least I have my bench built. I have some Milwaukee Packout tool storage systems. I grabbed the TV from my fifth wheel that I wasn't using and mounted it in here so I can watch some Netflix or YouTube, listen to some music, whatever. So my goal with this trailer is to start doing mobile RV repair. It's in high demand and I've already had a ton of customers. What I need to do with this trailer is get it so I can use it as a workshop and so that I have all my tools and supplies with me wherever I go. If you guys are interested in more of the, the tool trailer setup, let me know, I'll make another video about it. But now I need to get going on installing the automatic transfer switch so I can finish this project before it gets too hot. It's only 97 degrees right now, but it's gonna be 106 in about two hours. So I'm hoping to blast this out and get it done. Now my last video where I did the review on the anchor, I mentioned that I was gonna be using this manual transfer switch. I'm gonna wire up this manual transfer switch, which I was still excited to do, except I ran into some problems. The thickness of this board is too thick for that switch, and I didn't wanna get into a big custom and setup. So I decided to just run down to a local RV place and pick up a off the shelf WIFCO box. I also used one of these handy dandy 30 amp mail plugs. I cut six or eight feet out long enough that I can run it underneath there and then wheel it out here. All I'm gonna need for this project is I think some wire nuts. I have some strain relief for these knockouts. This is the actual transfer switch. Got the manual, got my cord ready to go. This is not the wall mount unit, but what I'm gonna do is simply take these brackets off, flip them over so that these holes face the outside. Probably gonna bend or cut this tab off so it doesn't stick out. And then I'll just put some screws in here and mount it to the wall. All I need to do is mount it to the plywood, so that should be really simple and easy. And the other thing I needed to do was I unplugged my AC from in here and I plugged it into this extension cord that runs outside and I'm gonna go plug that in now. 
my 12 volt light should stay on because I do have a battery. So this battery should keep me powered at least for a few hours. And I'm gonna disconnect the 30 amp plug. And then I have this adapted. Turn that back on and now we should have power for the AC. Whoo, it's hot. Now I'm gonna fire the AC back up and hopefully it works. It's back on. Oh, it feels good. So let me get started installing it. And then once I get it installed, I'll show you how I'm gonna be using all of this because I have my, my wheeled mobile cart. I have the wheeled anchor and I have this nice little aluminum ramp. This ramp on the threshold, it all locks together and I'm gonna have a ramp that goes in and out and I'll show you that at the end of the video. Anchor is sponsoring this segment of the video to get the word out about their mid-season sale. The sale is intended to kick off the new name for the 767, which from now on will be called the Solix F2000 Portable Power Station. I've already done a full review on these units and I'll leave a link to that video down below. But to give you a quick recap, the Anchor Solix F2000 has some incredible features. The durable wheels and easy tow retractable handles make it super portable. While the TT30 RV socket adds another layer of versatility. And as you can see, that's kind of the main premise behind what I'm doing in this video. And let's not forget the lithium iron phosphate batteries that stay healthy for up to 3000 charge cycles or approximately 10 years of use. I think that's pretty impressive, especially when you factor in the five year warranty. Anchor Solix is rolling out their mid season sale from July 3rd to July 10th. As a member of Anchor Solix, you'll get up to $1,200 off for the prime week sale with a 30 day price match. Stay alerted for flash sale deals as the product list will shift every 24 hours. Also, you can get free gifts like the Anchor 621 magnetic battery, Mag Go, and the Anchor 737 power bank, PowerCore 26K for laptops. If you're wondering how to use these shopping vouchers to get the lowest prices, let me explain. Once you sign up, you can buy these shopping vouchers and enjoy an extra 5% off on top of the sale price. For example, a $100 voucher costs just $95 and a $500 voucher is available for only $475. So if you want to purchase one of the Anchor Solix F2000s, you can use three $500 vouchers and one $100 voucher to get an additional $80 off the already discounted price. That's the lowest price that Anchor has sold these for yet. And if you don't want to calculate the best shopping voucher combination, you can always visit the listing page. I'll leave a link to it down below and they'll explain everything there. So why wait? Check out the link down below, go sign up and take advantage of up to $1,200 off for Anchor Solix fans. And remember, the Anchor Solix mid-season sale runs from July 3rd to July 10th. So sign up and don't miss out on these amazing deals. The Anchor Solix F2000 portable power station will keep you powered up no matter where you go. So live in power with Anchor Solix. All right, now back to the rest of the video. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to remove these brackets. I think I'm just going to take this little tab, bend it up out of the way, take the other one. Okay, so now I can just put this back on backwards. So now it's going to face out like this. Oh, you know what? Changed my mind. I think instead of putting it on this way, which is how it originally was, it doesn't give me much room to work here. If I flip it like this, you can see this is a, this sticks out farther. So that'll give me a little bit more room to get the screws into the wall. So let me change that. Now I want to prepare this for installation. I'm gonna pull the cover off. You can see you have your, your wires. It's all labeled inside. It's shore, generator. There's a different delay for each side in terms of how long it takes for the transfer switch to switch over. This goes to the distribution panel and this is my, my common ground. I'd like to install these. I just got these at Home Depot. I can leave links to all of this stuff down in the description. This side is three quarter inch. I'm just gonna put it through here. So I'm gonna just put these on snug but loose because I wanna be able to adjust them if I need to. Okay. And unfortunately, the other side is this 3 8 size. Anyway, so we got one more here. We'll put this in. So 
we got that installed. Now I have strain relief and cable clamps on both sides. Good to go. Let me see where this will fit. So something like that is probably great. Now I have to make sure that the anchor isn't gonna hit when it goes in. So this is gonna slide in like this. And then let me see if it'll clear. Oh, look at that, I have plenty of space. So that's good. So I'm gonna just throw it up there. That works for me. Here's my WIFCO box. I did disconnect the power. So there's no power to this, it's not live. I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna just check for voltage in here. There's no voltage. And I will throw my test leads on it just to make sure. We'll just go from the hot to ground and we have no voltage, which is good. You should always have a square drive, a screwdriver like this with you because they're used for everything, including these set screws for the breakers. So I get the, the hot out, and I think this is the, the neutral. And then the only other one is right here. And I'm actually gonna pull this conduit out. I have the service incoming disconnected. Let me try to pull it out. So we get that loose, probably cut and strip these, but I'll run this right into the box. I'll cut another section of this cord to go from the transfer switch back into the panel. Probably do something like this. So you can see I have plenty of length. I wanted to make sure that I didn't cut anything too short. I just wanted to have enough length that I can pull that and wheel it out like this. I cut a few feet of 10 gauge 30 amp cord to connect the automatic transfer switch to the breaker box. Next, I cut and stripped all the wires in preparation for the next step. So we're gonna have incoming, which is shore power. We're gonna have generator, and then this is to the distribution panel. A couple screws on the bottom. This is actually the relay inside. That's what it goes, click, click. But I just wanted to have more access in here so I can get my fingers in. Makes it easier to see on the camera as well. Neutral to neutral. I think I will clamp this down now. It will help hold the cable for me. Just put a little slack in there like that. I'm just kind of hitting these tabs, tightening it up. It doesn't have to be super, super tight. I like to leave as much slack as I can because if you make a mistake or if you want to make changes in the future, it's really good to have a little bit of a service loop. That looks about right to me. Pretty close. I'm going to strip these back. I'm going to just eyeball it. Yeah. These tan are rated for uh, up to three 10 gauge. So I'm only doing two 10 gauge but I could probably try it with the three 12 gauge, so it should be yellow. Yeah, see, it's, it's not gonna clear. So I'm gonna use these gray, because they're gonna fit better. Mm, it's biting very well, actually. Oh yeah. And then I'm gonna test it, make sure it doesn't come off. And I'm also, once I'm done, I'm gonna wrap all of these with electrical tape, just for safety. Okay, we got our neutral here. Okay, got another gray one here. Mm, these are working really well. All right, so we got those done. All right, I'm not gonna make you watch this entire thing. Put your wire nuts on, make sure they're really secure. Tug on them, make sure they don't pop out. Make sure you wrap electrical tape around both the wire and the wire nut. This is gonna help prevent the wire nut from backing out and loosening up over time. So I got my coil right here and I think it needs to go approximately. This is pretty boring stuff, but basically you just have to plug on through until you get everything connected. Get your wire nuts on, your electrical tape, 
You really want to make sure that everything's tight so it's not going to loosen up on you. Wrap a healthy dose of electrical tape around the wire and the wire nut. Tuck everything inside, then reassemble the covers. So because these are sharp, my wires are sticking up and this has to thread through here. I don't want to just push it. I'm going to put, push the wires underneath it. That way I don't run the risk of cutting the insulation on the wires. Let me just put this back together. Currently 93 degrees in here, it's pretty hot. But it's 100 and, 104 out right now. It's 2.30 right now, so it's basically the hottest part of the day, of course. But anyways, I'm almost done. I need to wire in that little pigtail and then mount that to the wall. And I think that's pretty much it. Let me finish that up. This part of the install had me questioning a few things. So I decided to speed this section up and talk about it a little bit. Now keep in mind, I inherited this breaker box and all of the wiring in it. And for the most part, it was done very well. All the wires connected to the breakers in this panel are solid copper, just like in any home. However, the incoming 30 amp wires are stranded. So I wanted to make sure I could use stranded wire in a square D breaker. I started doing some searching and found that this is a hotly debated topic. Now, I'm not an electrician and I don't know if this is up to code. I'm just a guy on YouTube, so don't take any electrical advice from me. After spending about an hour reading all the forums and looking up white papers, I found that yes, for the most part, you can use stranded wire with breakers. However, you do need to check with the manufacturer of your breakers to make sure that the breaker you're using is certified for stranded wire. But then I came across a white paper by Siemens, and they go into much greater detail. There are different classes of stranded wire. You have class B, class C, and fine stranded wire. I think what I'm using is finely stranded wire or possibly class C. And this white paper says that finely stranded wire is not UL listed for use with breakers. So I read through this white paper and found that in a situation like this, you can use a ferrule. So if you're doing a project like this and you need to secure stranded wire into a breaker, you might want to consider using a crimped ferrule. So you have a nice solid clump of wire going into the terminal so that when you crank down that terminal screw, none of the strands get pushed out of the way or cut which of course would reduce your amperage rating. When my ferrule kit comes in, I'll be crimping some onto that wire to make sure I don't have any problems in the future. I'm gonna try to blast through this part, which is just mounting the box. Now I'm not worried about making it level and perfect, I just need to mount it. So we got our our screws in, nothing special, but it works. This propane line's coming out of here shortly, but I think for now, I'm just gonna attach to it. There is no propane in this line. I'm gonna be removing the propane bottles. All of this is gonna be coming out. So I'll just leave that like that. And that'll just act as a a safety so I don't end up yanking out of the, the box. Oh, look at that, it's a little crooked. Oh well. All right, I got my anchor out. I wanna plug in. I'm gonna leave the panel open just so I can do some testing and then I'm gonna test the outlets and make sure I got all my wiring correct. Uh, so I'll just do AC outlets here. I think the automatic transfer switch waits 30 seconds before it provides power from the generator. And it says in the manual that that is to give the generator time to warm up and perform any diagnostics before it applies a load. Just clicked. Now my 30 amp breaker is off. So I'm gonna click that on and hopefully there's no smoke. Okay, my converter just came on. And you can see I got 429, 420 watts. That's the initial load of the converter when it comes on, it fires up. Plus, I've been running the lights all day and my battery is probably relatively dead. All right, it works. My whole trailer is being powered by the anchor. So right now you can see it's, it's actually powering my batteries, charging things. It's exactly what I was hoping for. It's tapered down to 192 watts, good deal. Kill this, pull that out. This is the plug to the trailer. Plug that in, we're gonna turn that back on. I wonder if it'll just switch back or if I have to turn the generator off first. I'm gonna shut this off. 
And yep, as soon as I shut it off, the transfer switch popped over. Now let me see what happens if I turn this back on. I wonder if it prioritizes the generator over the shore power. It does. So 30 seconds, it switches over to the generator, which is, which is this. And then if I shut this off, it clicks right back over to shore power. I would say that the automatic transfer switch is successfully installed. It works exactly how I want it to. I think now I need to test out my AC off of the setup and then start putting things back together. All right, I'm gonna swap my, my cord back to the wall outlet. Gotta wait 30 seconds. All right, we're back to the anchor. Let me turn the AC back on. Pulling 1400, 1500 watts. 200 of that is the trailer itself. Because it's so hot out, it is gonna pull some pretty high wattage. So it's not too bad. With both of these batteries in here, it gives me about two hours of runtime. Now it's time to put the panel cover back on. Well, I would say for the most part, we're done, thankfully, because it's hot. Very hot. Very, very, very hot. Now I can finally show you what I've been planning to do with these for the last six months. One of these is gonna get parked over here, and then this one will slide in right next to it, just like that. And then I can plug that in like that. We have our anchor plugged in there, and that's gonna power my electrical panel, which will power the rest of the trailer. I plan on using the second one that's not plugged in as my, my portable power station. I'm gonna take it with me. And let me show you how I'm gonna do that. So I bought this ramp on Amazon and my plan is when I have a big job and I'm gonna be in and out of the trailer, I'll be able to put this out and wheel all of my stuff in and out. So it lays down like this. I have these pins that I can drop in here. That'll keep it from sliding around on me. Now I can wheel my tools out. And when needed, I can come in here, pop the handle out, and simply tow it out and down the ramp. When I'm working on things, I'm in and out of this trailer constantly. So having that ramp makes it easier. I can get all my tools in and out. There it goes, it sits right in there. That works pretty well. I'm really happy with this. I think it's gonna be easy to grab these power stations whenever I need them. And now I don't have to worry about building a power system. I really like having these power stations. They're super rugged and durable. Now I can run my entire trailer off of this. So anyways, the trailer is, I'd say about 75% finished. Uh, I do need to get the AC in. That was kind of unexpected. I thought this was gonna do better than it is, but it's just not keeping up at all. But anyways, it's coming along nicely. Things are still a little messy in here. I haven't really figured out my whole workflow where everything needs to go, but all that's gonna have to wait for a future video. If you guys have any questions or thoughts about the trailer setup, please leave them down in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Make sure you check out Anchor's Midsummer Sale. It's a really good deal and I really like their products. I, I think you will too. No, it's not gonna run my air conditioner for days at a time, but it's gonna do everything else in here. In fact, I've been doing that for the last six months. It powers all my stuff. I charge all my batteries. I keep everything running. It even has all the USB-C ports that I can charge my phone with and things like that. And it doesn't have all the complexity of building your own system, which is the entire idea I had behind this. I think portable power stations eventually are gonna replace large RV power systems. You're gonna just buy the system, wheel it in and be done. I think the 767, which is now the F2000, is the first one on the market that can really do that. If you found this video helpful or informative, please give it a like and consider subscribing. It really helps us grow and it helps make all of the work I put into these videos worth it. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.